Behold, the Clock Tower, Castlevania 3, ladies and gentlemen. The original 8-bit Nintendo game being played here on the Wii U Virtual Console. Now, this is the third Castlevania game, and it returns to the game, the series roots. Uh, Mario 2, Zelda 2, Castlevania 2 all tried something a little bit different. Castlevania 2 had some bizarre RPG elements. Oh! Uh, but this game is more the platformer that the original Castlevania was. And this level is especially difficult. My middle brother, I have three older brothers, my brother Dan, he was not really much of a gamer. Uh, he grew up playing some classic arcade games, some coin-offs, but this game, he tried to play it, and he just... He could never do it. Whoops. Oop, oh, oop. Oh. Okay. Uh, he did get past the first level just fine, but this level always stymied him. Consistently. And I was never undersure... I was never sure I understood why, and I was never sure I understood why he continued playing a level that he couldn't finish when it's entirely optional. This game has branching paths, which is a first for the platformer style of Castlevania games. And you can explore the clock tower, or you can skip the clock tower. Whichever you like. Now on the map screen, that I chose this clock tower to be my next level from, it looked like this was the most direct path to Dracula's castle. And you'll find out at the end of this level whether or not that is, in fact, the case. Oh, there. Alright. Going from block 2-1 two, to 2-2. Two, two. 202, except for the dash, it's a palindrome. It has palindromic features. Which really probably doesn't interest anybody listening to this. But hey, I don't have OCD, but I do like symmetry. And jump. Man, that is a lot of clocks and gears. My goodness, this must be the most complicated clock ever designed. I wonder if there are any clocks in the real world with this many moving parts. Where would you find that clock? Probably like Germany or Switzerland? Is it stereotypical or racist to say that they are known for such things? I mean, that's what Gene Roddenberry was doing when he cast the original Star Trek. He said, oh, the Scots, they're good with machines, so let's make Scotty the engineer. There's a lot of uh, assumptions and stereotypes in that TV series, but I admire what he did, which was put the whole world working together. Different people from different continents and ethnicities, which you didn't find a lot uh, during the Cold War elsewhere. Ah, meant to kill that guy, but she flew right over me anyway. I did lose my holy water, but in a level that is this vertical, probably the axe is a better thing to have anyway. I would also take a boomerang, and maybe even the clock. The watch. Now, I can't do anything here, yet. You'll see. Alright. Those jumps are really hard. And I am just pleased as punch that I am making my way. Oh my goodness, I just lost my double axe in favor of a stupid old dagger? I stink. That is not a good trade, and if, had I not been so quick to grab whatever item fell out of a candle, I could have avoided this embarrassment entirely. Oh no! Ah! Ah! Huh, that's weird. I just had a sudden urge to play Star Tropics. Where does that come from? I'm playing Castlevania, I should focus on that. Aha! It's all about memorizing patterns. Just like uh, the original Donkey Kong, that's how Steve Weeby and Billy Mitchell get their high scores, is by studying patterns. Oh no! I didn't study that pattern! Oh, made it. Okay. Fortunately, I know a way to make this level easier, and you'll be seeing that shortly. Meat! Probably should have killed that guy first, just in case he damaged me. Can I please get a better weapon than the dagger? I'm gonna need it very soon. No? Fine. I'll do it the hard way. Okay. That guy is just gonna wait for me. Ah! You got your own dagger? Oh. Oh. Oh, he can go on ceilings. 
I don't remember that. Makes perfect sense, though, if you think about it. Oh man, I killed him. Oh, I was wondering if he was just going to keep on screaming until I picked up the orb. That would be macabre. But behold! Magic! Bloop, 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 bloop. Hello, my name is Bond. I mean, Grant. I dreamed I was turned into a ghost. Please take me with you. My family was killed by Dracula. What will you do? Well, why would I leave him behind? Nothing to gain from that. Take him with you. I can help you a lot because I am very fast. Let's shake on it. I'll shake my left hand to your left hand because we do things backwards here in Transylvania. Uh-oh, he must have been a load-bearing boss. Now that he's a human, or a pirate, and not a ghost, there cannot be a bridge. Correlation is obvious. Okay, so this is going to be the same video. I am not starting a new Let's Play video because this is still the clock tower. And we're just now having to go backwards. We need to climb down the tower. However, if I push the select button, at no cost to me, I don't lose any hearts or health, I can outplay as Grant, and I can even climb on walls and ceilings. And look! I can even go up here. He's like, what is this health bar thing doing up here? So this gives me a lot of options on how to navigate the level. I can just skip certain enemies, get more meat. Don't get as many points for not killing the skeleton, of course, but I'm not here for the points. And since this level, oops, is now going down, I don't have to worry quite so much about falling. However, Grant does take more damage. He has like a l l higher armor class or something, or a lower armor class, depending on what edition of D&D you're playing. I also don't know about his ability to use sub-weapons. Apparently he can use the dagger, and, or the double dagger, which is great, I guess. Can you use it while... nope. Alright, let's see if I can, uh... Ah! Nope, not quite what I meant to do, but okay. <sighs> so this is not counting down in blocks, I just went from 2-4 to 2-5. And now I can do something about this. One up! Not that I need it, of course, I haven't died yet. Can I go back up and get another one up? I strongly suspect not. That seems like a pretty obvious bug. See? Indestructible. It's kind of hard to cling to a corner you're about to fall off like I just made Grant do. But he does have those weird abilities to just violate the dimensions of the game, the structure of the level and just go wherever the darn he pleases. Eh, eh, oh, couldn't avoid that hit. And this is a point where I could fall down and die, because I have to take the stairs. Castlevania's funny like that. And since it's not counting down in blocks, I don't remember exactly how far I have to go. I've already forgotten what the beginning of the level looks like. But I can just skip that pendulum and go here. Now, like I said, this level is optional. If you skip this level, it's the same as saying no to Grant, basically. Except you will have gone through all the trouble of rescuing him and not have gotten anything for it. But there are three additional characters that Trevor can play as. This is only the first. And anytime you find another character and you choose to play or add that character to your party, you have to say goodbye to the person you're currently playing as. Or the additional character you've recruited. What I'm... that's a long way of... whoa, okay. Basically I'm trying to say that you can only have one additional character in your party at a time. So I'm probably going to stick with Grant, because the other two characters are kind of weak in my opinion, or very uh, inefficient to play as. 
But regardless, that is the end of the clock tower, so now I'm going to start a new video. Please stay tuned to YouTube channel GameBits for more Castlevania 3.